Look at this crap. This is garbage. This is terrible. The whole purpose of this channel is to be an open book and to show you guys things like that. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the channel. Today we have a 2022 Kawasaki ZX-6R. So today what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tune this bike the way it sits. It has the full M4 Street Slayer exhaust with the carbon fiber canister. And here it is right here. And then what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to install a Sprint POA air filter with Graves velocity stacks. I haven't seen anybody test this yet. So we're gonna test this one with the stacks and the sprint. Now we have dyno graphs and things like that where we've already tuned a full M4 with the sprint PO8. And usually what we see is around 119 wheel horsepower or so, roughly. But again, that's why we're gonna tune this first with the stock air filter and the stock stacks. And then what we'll do is we'll throw in the air filter and the stacks. We're a little limited on time today. We have a few bikes to get through. So we're going to try to knock this all out in one go. The bike also has a Power Commander 5 unit that's, that's uh, already been installed. So I'm not sure what part that's going to play in here. Hopefully it doesn't pull any power away from it by uh, being a piggyback. We haven't tested that either. So again, this is going to be what we're going to try to do is focus on the Sprint PO8 and the Velocity Stacks today. That's what we want to see the difference on. We just want to see the difference between the Sprint PO8 and the Velocity Stacks versus the stock air filter. Now, one other thing is Inside these air boxes, there's a ton of foam. Now all this foam in there, it creates turbulence. It kind of soaks up a lot of the airflow. So when we go in these air boxes, a lot of times we end up removing all of that foam. And what it does is it creates a little bit better airflow through the system and we actually pick up just a little bit more power. So we're gonna do that firm as well while we're in there. We're just throwing that in for the customer. So um, again, while we're in there. Now here's the stacks. These are the VE2s. They make a VE1 and a VE2. So these are the VE2s, which is gonna give a better overall power band increase, okay? So they make a set of short stacks and then they make a set of mix match. So you'll have two long and two short. Usually the two long go in the middle, the two short go on the outside. And that's what kind of gives you the overall increase in your power band versus the short stacks. They will give you more of a top end power band uh, increase however they'll sacrifice a little bit in the mid-range it usually pulls a little bit out of the mid-range from all the testing that we have done so far so keep that in mind uh, we're gonna test these bad boys it looks like great quality I'm uh, very excited to test the grave stacks so uh, let's get to it <laughs> Okay guys, so we just got done doing the baseline on this uh, ZX6R here. Okay, now I haven't taken a look at this Power Commander 5 yet. I haven't looked at it. I have no idea what kind of maps on it. Uh, what the customer stated is that it is on a stock ECU. So um, again, I don't know. I literally, I have not looked at it yet, okay? Your guess is as good as mine, but I just wanted to point this out to you. And this customer already thought this bike was pretty peppy as it is, okay? Look at this crap. Look at his AFRs and look at this graph, okay? Not horrible right here. And I say that loosely. We're at 11.8 air AFR air fuel ratio. It's pretty bad. So he's losing torque. Look right here. Here's our torque curve. So he's losing torque. Then he picks it back up. AFRs are pig rich, just dumping, dumping, dumping fuel. It gets up where it basically needs to be, right around the eight, 9,000 mark. This is pretty close. Even at 9,500, we're really close. We're 12,9, that's really close. That's, that's perfect. It's perfectly acceptable. Then we go down to 12,6 here at 10K, which, so let's say around 8,000, even 75. We'll say 7,500 all the way up to about 10,000 RPM. It's a pretty stout power band, very linear, very linear power band, good torque curve. However, and the AFRs are close here. However, 
Look what happens at 11,000 RPM and on. Look how horrible this map gets. And he thinks it's a rocket ship. Like, in fairness, you know, I'm sure he's used to staying around the eight to 10,000 mark, you know? But he stated this thing feels fast already. He thinks there's just a little bit left in it. But look at this. The AFR's tank literally goes off the chart. Literally off the chart. The dyno can't, well, it's set up. It will not read past 10 AFR. And it literally flatlines and goes along it the entire rest of the pool, all the way up to 15,000 RPM. And look what happens to our curve. Look right here. Curve comes up, basically flatlines. It's struggling, struggling. It wants to make the power. It's trying to make the power, but because there's so much fuel getting dumped into the system, it literally cannot do it. So it's just struggling, struggling. And look at our actual power numbers. We're at 103.67 wheel horsepower and almost 44 foot-pounds of torque. That is ridiculous. This bike should be, like I said, all dialed in. This thing should be around 119 roughly wheel horsepower after we get done with the uh, at least the air filter and exhaust. Uh, now again, we're throwing the stacks in there, so I'm expecting a little bit better, maybe around the 120 to 121 mark, hopefully, knock on wood. We'll see where we end with, I don't know. But again, this is garbage, garbage. This is terrible. We'll see what happens after we install the air filter and the stacks. We're not sure yet. However, this is garbage. This is terrible. This is just horrible. But again, this just goes to show you, you never know what you're getting into until you baseline the bike. So this is exactly why every single bike that comes through this shop, we baseline it first because you don't know what you're gonna get into. I had no idea we were gonna see this. I was expecting to see something a lot better than this. So again, you just, you never know until you baseline it. And this is precisely why we do that. I'm gonna go through it. We're gonna tune it the way it sits. We're gonna make all these modifications. We're gonna just see where it sits. Here we go. We're gonna go through it and uh, we'll see what we get out of it. All right, guys. So here is the ZX6R all stripped down, uh, at least to the airbox. So these are the factory stacks. Notice how they are all basically equal length. The designs on the outside are slightly different. Uh, and the designs on these Graves stacks are going to be a little bit different. Now, these are going to be about the same height, okay? And we'll, we'll show you guys a little bit better. These are really clean. Yeah, these things look killer. So the two middle ones are higher. Yep, so the two middle ones are gonna be taller. And then uh, the two outsides are actually gonna be our shorties. And uh, notice again how tall, oh yeah, they are short. Notice how tall these are. These are the factory ones. And now look how short these are gonna be. Very, very big difference on that low. Pr now, again, these are going to sit recessed in a little bit, so it's going to sit very, very low. Yeah, almost flush. So, and this is the foam that we were talking about, okay? This is all glued in from the factory. So you notice how it just kind of tears. So it's, it's I'm not going to lie to you, it's an absolute pain in the butt to get this all out. However, it, it makes a difference. Like I said, we usually see about one or two wheel gain roughly, roughly. Uh, just from tearing all of this out. So uh, I'm not gonna give it away, but we flashed and tuned this bike. We're gonna go over the numbers at the end, but we picked up massive gains already. So very, very curious to see what this is gonna do with the new stacks, the new air filter, and all this foam stripped out of there. So stay with us. This is gonna be a pretty dope transformation, pretty excited. So here it all is, guys. This is the air box with all the foam taken out of it. Here are the new stacks. These are the grave stacks right here. So now you can see vividly how much shorter these stacks really are when you look at it. It's a lot shorter than the OEM ones. So now again, these two in the middle are about the same height. Uh, they're basically identical to the OEMs. They're just made out of this billet material. Uh, an anodized black, really nice quality, very nice material. Graves, uh, I feel like Graves really did a good job on these. So they look great. The finish is nice and smooth. All the machining looks nice and clean. It's a good product. This is a very good product. So, so guys, notice we got this screen right here too. This, this screen and along with a thick paper material, this is your OEM air filter. Now I've done this test before with the other sprints, but again, we'll just reiterate it. Here's a stock filter with the screen. You can see Lewis has got his flashlight. Here's the other side of it. Uh, pretty hard to see. 
as we can all agree on. Pretty damn hard to see. Now, here's the Sprint. Wow, much brighter. <laughs> yeah, you can see that vividly. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell in the camera, I'll be honest. However, you get the idea. Yeah, see here, we can see the fluorescent through there too. It's also a much bigger surface area than the OEM air filter. So we're gonna slap that in there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, throw it on the dyno here in just in a minute. We're gonna throw the cap on here, uh, throw the top of the air box rather, and uh, bolt it all back in and get this thing moving. Right now we have a, a track bike actually uh, that's on the dyno. It's on the dyno currently. So we're gonna get that bad boy off and uh, get this thing swapped on and uh, keep it moving. <laughs> It's the end of the day and we finally are done. We ran about four bikes today on the dyno, so I'm pretty beat. Uh, now, with that being said, I will admit we weren't able to change over the velocity stacks and the sprint filter and do that airbox mod. We weren't able to do it all within, let's say within the same hour. In fact, it was about three to four hour differences at least because of the fact that we had other bikes that we were running. During this time, the weather changed a little bit. It was hotter when we did these final runs. So, uh, and I'll show you that in the graph. It's gonna be a little confusing, so stick with me, all right? It's gonna be a little confusing. I'll try to explain it the best I can. However, at the end of the day, the bike still made gobs of power for a ZX-6R and for my dyno, honestly. it crushed it today so i'm not gonna lie we made very good numbers i just was hoping for a little bit more you know we're always wanting that little bit more right so i was just hoping to see a little bit more however I i'm not complaining i'm just i just like i said i just wish we would have seen a little bit more after the mods uh however here are the results Again, for a quick reminder, when the bike came in, we did baseline at 103 and 44, a little round up, 44 foot-pounds of torque. There was a map in the Power Commander. It was atrocious. Who knows what had been done to it, but it was running absolutely pig-rich, just dumping fuel, okay? Just a quick recap. Now, what we did was we tuned the bike. We flashed and tuned it. And it made 100 and freaking 25 wheel horsepower and 50 foot pounds of torque, which is just incredible for a ZX6R. Now, granted, it is a 636, but still, these are great numbers. Very, very great numbers. So in the beginning, I don't know if you remember, but I was hoping for about 119 to about 121-ish. 123 would be like very, very good numbers on this dyno, and we crushed that. We did 125. That's amazing, amazing. So I'm very happy with that. Now, after we installed the Sprint PO8, we, we took out that foam in the air box, and then we also installed the Graves Velocity Stacks. We still are at this 125 and 50 foot-pounds of torque, okay? So we didn't change much there. And if you look at the actual curve, let me take off the baseline. We'll come back to that. Let me take that off, and let's just analyze these two curves, okay? Now, if you look at it, it's almost as if we just degreed the camshaft. It doesn't even, it, the camshafts, it doesn't even look like we really did velocity stacks, which is really interesting to me. I, I, I'm very surprised by this data. You see, as this comes up, you know, the blue line, if you follow this blue line, and then we have this little dip, you know, not dip, but plateau, and then it kind of pulls up again. Now look at the red one, it's all, this red line, it's almost as if the stacks just moved everything to the right a little bit. You see, we have this climb here, and then we have, you know, it keeps climbing here. So we have a little bit of loss in power, then we have a little bit of gain in power, then we have a little bit of loss in power, and then if we carry it all the way up here, we have gain in power up top on the high RPMs, okay? Now, the thing that I'm a little upset about, again, look, so we're at basically 120 wheel here versus the 116 here. So we did pick up two to three wheel at the high, high, high RPM, which is what this customer was requesting. He said, hey, I want a little bit more power up top. 
which compared to his baseline, we gave him a shit ton of power up top. And um, needless to say, he should be very, very thrilled with these numbers compared to what the bike came in with. Very surprised at these numbers. I was not expecting it to be similar horsepower and torque numbers. I thought we were for sure gonna see around 127 after we did the original uh, ECU Flash and Dyno Tune. So let's take this one off now. We'll leave the final number out and we'll compare it to his app, uh, his baseline with how he came into the shop, okay? So how the bike came in versus how it's actually leaving. Let's analyze this, okay? Look at these gains up top. We went from 92 and a half horsepower to 100, basically almost 124, and this is at, we're targeting 13,300 RPM, okay? We're talking about gains of 31 wheel Horsepower, 31 on a 600 series bike. That is monumental, monumental. Again, I've said this several times in previous videos. If you can be around the 6% or greater, as far as your rate of change, that's a very noticeable difference. We're dealing with 30%, you know, 30% rate of change, you know, that's five, times the amount of what it normally is to, to actually feel it. So this is going to feel like a freaking rocket ship compared to what he's used to. He's not gonna know what to do with himself with this power band. I mean, look, even right here, 98 wheel versus 125. You know, that's 27 wheel horsepower gains. That's massive. And look at the torque. We're dealing with 10 foot pounds of torque gains. That's huge. On a, again, this is a six, 636 CC motor. This is absolutely outrageous, the kind of gains that he's seen. You know, and even in the mid-range here, we'll take a mid-range number here, around uh, here, let's target 9,000 RPM. Uh, we're picking up eight wheel horsepower, you know, eight wheel horsepower at 9,000 RPM. Again, huge, huge, huge gains. You know, this is around 12%, rough math, again, rough math. Um, you know, this is very, very big gains. Air fuel ratios, again, we're seeing a nice clean line now dancing around that 13.2 mark. You know, we do have some little blips, some little peaks and valleys here, but again, we're dancing around an acceptable range. So uh, as long as we're seeing around 13.4, 13.5 and then lower, I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, 12.8, that's fine, 12.9, we're okay, this is fine. Now there is one last thing I wanted to show you guys if you can stick with me, okay? This is where it gets a little confusing. I wanted to show you this. I don't typically show people this because it gets a little confu it gets a little tricky to kind of explain this. Um, however, I wanted to show you this. This right here is showing you the conditions in which we're running and the correction factor that it's producing right now. Okay, a 1-0 correction factor means that it is not correcting at all. That means there's no changes made, which means the temperature is favorable, okay? DinoJet has put it in their software. I don't know what it is. I don't know the exact numbers, but at a certain humidity, pressure, and temperature, you're going to be at their considered what their 1-0 mark is, okay, for the standard correction factor. Some people use SAE, some people use standard. Uh, there's quite a few correction factors you can use. Most people use standard, admittedly, because it reads higher than the rest, okay? SAE is supposed to be their newer style correction factor. Standard was their older style correction factor. They say that is what NASCAR used or something like that. I talked to a rep. Anyway, so we use, we use the standard correction factor. Uh, again, it depends on who you talk to. They'll argue with you till they're blue in the face on which one you should use. However, it doesn't really matter. The numbers are the numbers. Again, what matters is your dyno operator knowing what you should make with what correction factor they're using, okay? The important thing that I wanted to show you is look at this, okay? Here's when we flashed and tuned it without the modifications made. Here was the final with the modifications. We're dealing with the 86 degrees and 87 degrees. Very, very similar, right? We're within a degree. That's not that different. Pressure, very, very similar. Not that different. Check this out though. Humidity, 47% versus 52%. That's a 5% difference, okay? All right? Simple math. We are still dealing with the same correction factor though, however, even though we have a difference in humidity. So with that being said, if this correction factor changed, and I don't know at what point it changes, but if it went to a 1.04, which means we're gonna have a 4% correction, 
this final number would have actually gone up probably another one to two wheel horsepower, which I was expecting to see about 127 wheel horsepower with the changes that we've made. Peak horsepower. This is measuring peak horsepower, not your overall power, just what it made at its peak. Same thing with your torque, peak torque, okay? So given that these numbers did not change, that they're dealing with the same correction, however, our humidity, it was more humid for the final numbers. Given that it was more humid, that means it's harder to combust the fuel because there's more water in the air and we're still dealing with the same correction factor, okay? Again, it's a little difficult to explain and I know it's gonna go over some of your guys' heads and stuff like that and uh, I, I get it, but at the same time, I wanted to point that out because I was a little let down. I wanted to see a little bit higher of a number given that we did those mods. Now again, we did make those runs a few hours apart it is, uh, what are we at? It's, we're in uh, June, so we're basically in the summer months right now in Florida. So the temperature, you see, it's getting pretty warm. And we do have AC, we do have fans. We try to keep it as cool as possible, you know, especially because we're running these bikes really, really, really hard. So we're trying to keep the bikes as cool as possible while we're running them on the dyno so they don't overheat and we don't cause any kind of damage. Uh, with that being said, we can't control the humidity. So again, I, I wanted to show you guys the differences between, uh, between those temperature and the humidity. And sometimes you will see different numbers based on humidity and temperature differences and pressure. It's something interesting. Again, it's, very, <laughs> it's a very argumentative thing in the dyno and the tuning world. People all the time kind of get in a pissing argument uh, about run conditions, correction factors, and everything else in between. So uh, again, the whole purpose of this channel is to be an open book and to show you guys things like that so that you can get a better understanding as far as what we're seeing as tuners and analyzing the numbers. I tell people all the time, don't get caught up in the numbers because they get set on, well, my buddy made blah, 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 blah. Why am I not making blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, I mean, how was the environment? How old was the bike? How did he break it in? What kind of mods did he have? What kind of tune? What kind of fuel was he running? There's, so, there's a million variables to this stuff. So again, at the end of the day, don't get caught up in the numbers too much, okay? What matters is, does your dyno operator know how to operate his dyno correctly and how to tune correctly, okay? At the end of the day, if they look at you and they're very experienced and they know what the hell they're doing and they tell you, hey, these are very good numbers for my dyno, listen to them, okay? They know what they're saying. There's years of experience there. There's years of knowledge. Just trust what they're saying and, and again, go from there. And again, this is if they're an honorable, if they're trustworthy, if they're loyal, like all, all the positive attributes, as long as they're that person, you can trust them and just follow, follow their lead and let them, let them tell you what's going on, okay? Just have faith in your tuner, okay? Listen to them. I hope you guys really did learn some stuff from this video. Every video, we're trying to show you something new and bring it to the table, something that you've never learned before. That's the goal of this channel, again, is to be an open book and so to help you guys learn, okay? If you could, please like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. We really, uh, we really, really, really are enjoying doing this. Me and Lewis and Seth and all the other guys involved, we, uh, we really are appreciative of you guys. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll see you on another episode.